It's pedal to the metal, keeping on that grind. Gotta keep it moving, never looking behind the stove. It's the blade and the sparks, they gonna fly. There's beauty in the making when you're taking your time. Sure as it beats working nine to five, it's easy when you love it and you're busy living that sharp life. That sharp line. All right. After another quick break, uh, so we're going to talk about a, a bunch of the knives. You have some of your older knives here, but you also have some of the newer production knives. So we're going to look at that. Let's look at some of the knives you've made because I know you've got a handful of them out here. And I, they're down here on the table so that you guys can see. But uh, go ahead and show us the ones you've got here. Okay. This is, uh, this is Susan's knife now. I had made it originally for uh, Assistant Attorney General of the uh, State of New Mexico, um, John Grubasek. And um, Susie saw it on the workbench, and she said, I want it. So what could I do? It's now Susan's knife. I, I mean, this I can't is, argue uh, with her. This is um, the Model 36 uh, Battle Mate. And this, this was uh, the next knife I designed after the, uh, the, se the second knife I designed after the Model 30. It's uh, very similar. But it's larger, heavier, it has a bolster, and this was the uh, Kydex type of sheath that I designed. Actually, I was uh, the first one to really use Kydex back in uh, 1982. Because, yeah. it, well, you were for, like heat molded, doing a heat molded Kydex sheath. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tom Marringer and I both came to the same guild show in Kansas City with. Um, molded kydex sheaths and we were the first ones to to use kydex as a sheath material so um and here's another kydex one this is this was these are experimental knives that i designed uh built uh, as prototypes this was like a little little oh, survival knife type of thing didn't go very far never got into production how long ago was that no oh, this was i don't know 84 maybe 85 so here's the thing i want to point out guys like the the things that bob has has brought to the market you see this these are things you're seeing now that people are trying to that, that, that people are trying to say oh look what we did this was when again probably 85 maybe it could have been 86 somewhere around there those are hex you know, you know let me tell you something people always have people show me pictures of knives on online they said can you tell me when this knife was made and uh, how many of them you made and why you designed this? And then, you know, back in the day, in the 80s, knife makers, you know, we weren't really thinking of the history of these things. We were trying to make a living. We were trying to put our kids through school, pay the mortgage and so forth. We didn't spend a lot of time recording and keeping track of things and, and filing away information and stuff. We just wanted to get knives out there and, and make some money, you know, and just put the groceries on the table. Um, so it, it's it's kind of difficult remembering, you know, when did you make that knife? <laughs> I can give you basically within maybe a five or eight year period, but not much better than that. Yeah, but what I was saying is the things that people think are innovations now are things that you had already thought of. Those hex, having a hex, being able to slide a hex nut in there and using the handle, yeah. like some knives have now that they think is a big innovation, that was 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. You were already doing that. Yeah, at least at pretty close to 40. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I'm 50. 35 years, yeah. yeah. And so. uh, some other prototypes, this was, this was the prototype for, um, that I made, I think his name was Pear. Lundgren, I'm not sure of the last name. He was the publisher of Paladin Press. Paladin Press published things like the Anarchist Cookbook and various um, military 
They, they reprinted, um, what do they call them? Field manuals? Field manuals. Field yep, manuals. Paladin Press. Uh, yeah. They did the booby trap manual from Vietnam and exactly. those released yeah. them through Paladin well, Press. Pear wanted some knives made for him. I think I made uh, maybe a dozen. I can't remember how many of these. But once again, you know, I don't remember. It says prototype on there. And I don't even think I put the date on there. But I think I made probably about 10, 10 or 12 of these. This was the prototype. Um, this was a production that I designed for, um, it was a military. The, the Marine Corps was having a competition for a bayonet. And I wanted to enter it. And I designed this. Camillus uh, decided to produce some of them. It never went very far. It didn't get into the whole military thing, but this was the basically the bayonet that I designed. And, and that's dub that's that has an actual double edge. It has a, a sharpened swedge, and yeah. and will actually cut as opposed to any bayonet I've ever seen before, which is really just a, a glorified club. Correct. Yeah. And uh, but I do have a we did get a, a patent. Uh, I hold a patent on the sheath. Um, the sheath basically was intended to be uh, multi-use, not only to keep the, the bayonet, but also as a wire cutter. And I had the handle so that you didn't have to remove it from your belt. You could lean over and you could actually... Can you see the wire yeah. cutter there? Yeah. There's the wire cutter. It's got a mini set of bolt cutters on the, built into it. Yeah. And the other... And you could... With, there's a little tab on the side here. Press that tab and you can take this out so it can be used without the sheath. And it has the two types of um, cutters. One for a uh, ribbon, which is like a razor wire, shear, and the other is uh, the compression type for cutting barbed wire. And a screwdriver for taking apart the bayonet or tightening it up. And it had a... Uh, coated diamond sharpener on the edge so you could keep the, the bayonet nice and sharp. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant, Bob. So that's far as that went. Um, there are some production knives being made now. They're going to be out, uh, we're hoping pretty soon within the next month or so. Uh, Fox Cutlery in Italy, one of my favorite companies, is producing a um, an, an ATCF OG. I think they're calling it the number number one or something. Um, all titanium, and it's got the thumb disc opener, which I invented for the ATCF. That disc on the top, and it's also a uh, flipper. So this is what I call a double action, both a flipper or the one-handed. Uh, thumb disc open like that and they'll be um, coming out we hope pretty soon we're going to be marketing these in the United States and Fox is going to be marketing them around the world so that's the, the arrangement we made with them it's a uh, liner lock titanium and um, magna cut steel on the blade nice yeah and of course I'm still making the ATCF customs which I've gotten to handle a few of them, and they are an incredible knife. There, I've got uh, six are going to be coming up soon, so I am doing those. Now I wanted to talk about. I know you've got you've got it there. The seventy five for seventy five. So the guys have seen a seventy five for seventy five on my channel. Could so let's. Ta I want to talk about this because this was something amazing that you did for your seventy fifth birthday. Never again. There will not be an eighty for eighty. <laughs> I promise you. Maybe an 8 for 80? <laughs> Maybe 8 for 80, I don't know. But we actually, we, I actually made 75 of these for my 75th birthday. And it took a year. And uh, one other thing that we did, because 75, uh, the 75th birthday, the stone is a diamond. Diamond anniversary. Yep. And in the back of each one, each one of the 75 knives has a little diamond. Yep, set in the set in the backspacer. Set in the backspacer. Well, actually, I had one that we picked up at a knife show, and Nico still has it. 
that had the diamond. It was a 75 for 75. It had the diamond in the pocket clip. It was set in the, the, the back of the pocket. It was the, the wart. I'm sorry, the recurved one that you had done. Yeah. That we, that was the show where you did the big damn steel, uh, <laughs> gold inlaid, uh, pizza cutter. Mm. If you remember that, that was, that that was, very well. was insane. Yeah. yeah. So that, um, made, that made quite a hit at, uh, I think there was a tactical knife show. I can't remember either that or the Friday night blade affair. It was the Friday night blade affair. Yep. Was an airplane passing over. It, I can edit it out. It's not okay. that big deal. Um, um, I, w I wanted to say, okay. So of all the knives you've made and designed, what one would you have to say stands out as either your favorite? What would stand out as your favorite? And what one would you say just is, has been the biggest pain to do or make? The biggest pain yeah like what one would you say you're like oh man this is such a nightmare to to do boy that's a, that's a hard question probably the most difficult of my designs are the persian ones fitting the blade into the handle and grinding that curve that 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 mm -hmm. makes a persian that kind of gentle beautiful graceful curve um I would say that's probably the most challenging one, you know. So what's your favorite one to make? What's your favorite knife of all the knives you made? What's your favorite one that you've made? What model, what design? Um, well, that's another hard one. <laughs> it's hard it, it's, it's hard to pick one out. I just enjoy making the, the knives. Um, the Eagle Rock, I think, is is one that has given me a great deal of satisfaction. Now, the ATCF, you know, it, it's the most popular one. This is the mm -hmm. one I've sold the most of, and I've been making it since. Once again, they asked me this question: When did you start doing that? Uh, well, I think it was it was like 1987, 86 or 87, um, and I've been and I've never stopped making them ever since then yeah. because it's it's in such high demand you know um people have told me it's basically the perfect knife perfect pocket knife in terms of you know what you can carry around for utility for defense it's uh, a general all-around really good knife the one that i that i really like the design of a whole lot i'm really proud of is the eagle rock and we 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 named that for the street that we lived on in um, Albuquerque. We lived on Eagle Rock Avenue. And when I moved down from Santa Fe to Albuquerque, I designed that knife as kind of a welcome to Albuquerque type of thing. But I really like the design. It's got a, a kind of a harpoon blade. They call it a little yeah. in the front. It's I, I, I've got a picture of it somewhere, and I'll drop it in so you guys can see it. I'm sure I can find one online. I could just drop it. It is a beautiful, beautiful knife. Yeah, and it 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 works really well. Yeah. So, so those uh, are hard questions to answer. Well, and I, I like to I like to throw a couple of those questions in when I talk to any of the like any of the really well known knife makers because it, there's such a a history there that it's just one of those questions like what's what's the favorite design you've done what's you know and when i do live feeds i like to ask people like if you could take any blade shape any handle any part from any knife throw them together and not have to worry about the the overall making it work but like what would that knife look like and i that's one that when i would do live feeds and ask other knife makers are like wow i really wish you had me ask me that question i wish, wish you'd send it to me in email i was like it's a lot more fun to ask that question as kind of a just yeah. kind of throw it out there and make them like see them thinking about it. So, um, so we talked about all this. I, I'll definitely, we'll definitely talk about the, the folding knives. I'll see if I can borrow one of the prototypes when they start coming out. But what I want to kind of do is I want to do a, a quick shop tour so everybody can see you have got probably one of the best organized shops I've ever seen. So we're going to break to that. Uh, I'm going to retool how I've got this all set up and, uh, you guys join us back in a minute and we're going to take a look at how Bob's shop is all set up.